Hey everybody, Wesley Miles from Native Print Photography. I'm here in uh, West Phoenix, along the lap there. Our institute's right over there, I was to school at, but that's a different story. Uh, we're here for to kick off the men's side campaign of the Fist with Strength. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself. So, My name is Kevin Connor. Um, I'm living in West Phoenix currently. My family's from uh, Gila River. How old are you? Just to let you guys know, this is actually my cousin. Uh, we grew up together ever since we were little. And if uh, you want to know how, how close we are, we're like cousin brothers. But people always ask me, they see my tattoo and it's like half of half the maze. And they're like, well, why do you why do you have half the maze? Well, this is why. My cousin, I don't know if you can catch it in the camera, but he actually has my other half. So we're, we're brothers, we've been through a lot, a lot, a lot. So it gives me great honor and, and privilege to have him share his, uh, his, his testimony and his story, which uh, is a great, great honor. Um, so you're here in West Phoenix. Um, the reason why? Um, currently, I'm in, I'm in recovery um, at the Victory Outreach Ben's Home. It's, it's uh, the same program I went through, actually in Casa Grande, and my cousin's going through it uh, here in West Phoenix. They also have other locations throughout the city. But we'll touch on that later on. Um, I can't wait to hear what you're gonna say and share with uh, the men of Hill River. So uh, I'll let you. I'll let you have at it. All right. All right, bro. I'd like to thank my my cousin Wesley for giving me this opportunity to share. And uh, most importantly, I'd like to thank uh, the Lord, my God, for, for giving me the sound mind to to be here with you today. And um, I'm just gonna begin with uh, with um, my roots, where I came from. I came from a, a family, a household that was together. My mother and father, they were still married to this day, about 25 years. They, uh, they taught me some good beliefs and good morals. They were uh, basically derived from, the, the, from Christianity. And I had my, my grandfather there as a, as a positive role model for me. And, and I respected him as my elder, so he he like reinforced those uh, those beliefs within me, and kind of taught me how to how to be a man and how to uh, to own up to uh, my mistakes and how to um, develop a good work ethic and, and always to work hard and, and when you do something you do it right. All that sounds great, right? But um, one thing I struggled with was was pride pride and my arrogance, which, uh, which brought me to, to this point of living my life knowing what was, what was good and what was right, but refusing to do so because I believed I knew what was, what was better. My way was easier. My way was um, made more sense to me. And I wouldn't heed any uh, good or positive advice. I could recite it to you or to pass it on to someone else who I would feel they would they would make better use of it, they would benefit more from it, because maybe they had a had a, a cleaner heart, they had better soil than I did. Mine was mine was thorny and it was being choked out by by the worldly worldly cares and worries. My ways of thinking made me lost, and this is where cousin Wesley comes into my life and this is where our, our tattoos came into existence. We were both lost in our own walks and together we just became this, this massive confusion and it was detrimental to both of our, our uh, personal lives. He had, uh, he had worked hard to get to the position he was at in his career at the time as well as myself. And once we came together, we became foolish, and we we let go of those responsibilities, you know, always believing that there was a tomorrow, that there was going to be better better opportunities, which was true to a point. But we had to be better stewards of what was given to us then and there. That all comes with living and learning, but we didn't learn. See. 
Personally, I spent uh, years living in darkness. I was backslidden from the truth and from my old love, my old love of the Lord and, and His right ways, which sets the foundation for a sound life, for, for um, good work ethics and, and for um, envisioning dreams and, and to capture those dreams and, and giving you the endurance to, to chase after them and to not, to not grow weary. In my backslidden state, my heart became calloused. I heard the voice of God. I would see His works, and I witnessed some of His miracles. But that still wasn't enough for me, unfortunately. And again, that was my pride and my arrogance in knowing better. Keeping my whole heart from Him, I knew my time was coming to an end. I had exhausted all my efforts and, and my family and my, my loved ones, my friends. And I knew at that time when I was um, cornered, then God would have my full attention. Then I would turn to the righteous path and, and pick up my old, uh, my old work ethics again. My advice to you is once you hear the voice of God and you feel His Holy Spirit, to not let it go, to run with it, and inherit the promises that He made for you when you were in the womb, and just, just to embrace that truth. To this day, I struggle with faith. I struggle with, um, with my addiction. The cravings never really go away. share the same um, struggles as I do and it's it's you all that keep me going as well as the Lord the, the, the cares and, and the heart that God gave me for the hurting coming from the hurt and now it's my turn to pass it on to you and I just thank you for this opportunity and I pray that it, it uh, lands on fertile soil thank you for your time great plans for each and every one of you whether you live on the reservation or if you live off the reservation uh, there's people still hurting there's families still broken but it's through this kind of campaign that we can kind of share with the men and and let them know you know it's okay to feel this way I know we, as men we don't really talk about our feelings much it's difficult, it's difficult. we kind of buried it underneath and we just go on throughout our day until one day it, it just comes out out of nowhere and who knows what that leads into you know shoot like it leads into a, a lot more hurt and a lot more uh, dead ends and like uh, unexplained uh, unexplained events right domestic violence or children being taken away or getting locked up or it's just it's just a cycle you know down to put that needle down to put that joint down and s slow down <laughs> yeah. just put it to the side you know focus on what's really important your children your family your girlfriends your wives many of us sometimes take life for granted like my cousin Kevin was saying thinking that there's gonna be a tomorrow but you never know, promise never promise we could, we could pass away today who what, what are people gonna say once we're six feet under? You know, like what's gonna be? Are they talk good about us? Are they talk bad about us? We gotta leave a legacy. We want to be good testimonies as well. We want to leave our our name not tarnished and leave, leave it. Let's honor our mothers and our fathers. You know, brothers, 
sons, husbands, boyfriends. This is a cry out to you saying, you know what, you gotta wake up. You gotta, you gotta make something happen. Um, like I said, I was from, I came from the Victory Outreach in Casa Grande. I graduated that program. My cousin, how, how many months are you in this now? Right now I'm two months. Two months in. But before you were, you were in there for a minute. I was in there for four months previously. Previously, but he, came, he left, but he came back. You know, there's always a second chance. There's always a fourth chance. There's always a ninth chance. It doesn't matter how many times it takes. It's just to get it right. And so, um, give him a little information about the home. Um, the home is a is a residential Christian community that has the, the goal of uh, restoring lives that have been destroyed, disrupted by drugs, alcohol, and or other substance abuse. And the, the purpose of the home is to uh, establish a positive work ethic, uh, to establish a relationship with Christ, and to restore the family. Amen. And you know, that's what, that's what we're striving for, so. If you have any, if you have, if, if you yourself are watching this video and you feel like you need some help, that you can't do it on your own, that you need to get away from the environment that you're in, the home is a free recovery. Absolutely free. It's free, free of charge. All there is is really a, a commitment of, of of your of your time to uh, to get closer to the Lord and help you restore your life to take care of those those cravings, those those issues, those demons on your back, you know, that weigh you down. You're, you're, you're meant more. You're, you're worth more than a bottle. You're worth more than a joint. So much more. You're worth more than a hit. You know, you you got to value your life. But again, you know what? It just it just flows out when people start caring. It's okay. It's, it's fine. So again, we thank you for your time. I thank my cousin Kevin Connor for uh, helping me in this campaign. Uh, I know you watched uh, Delia's? Uh, yeah, I, I watched Delia's uh, testimony for the women's campaign. It was awesome, and uh, it was encouraging to me. And uh, I'm I'm really honored to help uh, kick off the, the men's campaign. Yeah, and it's gonna yeah she, and then uh, with Kika and then also with Renee, it, it's just powerful women. And so uh, not only my cousins helping out, I have uh, other stronger men within the community are going to be sharing. And I can't wait to, to be a part of that as well. So, um, again, thank you, supporters, for all your time. Uh, any questions, comments, uh, concerns, you can put them in the comment box below. You can always get a hold of me on my personal Facebook uh, messaging or native print, and I can get back to you as soon as possible. But thank you so much for your time, and we just appreciate it. So, guess have a good day.